everything that ultimately becomes relevant for the future of art history is right in this drawing. The drawing was made at the very final stages of creating Raphael's last masterpiece, the Transfiguration, a huge four meters tall painting now in the Vatican. This is a type of drawing that most other artists at this point didn't make. It's actually the last work the artist is doing before painting. Making these incredibly detailed studies of these, these heads, the same size as they were going to appear in the painting so that he can really get into every tiny aspect of the light, the way the light falls on the head and the way that creates three dimensions. It's just drawn with lights. It just lights and shadow. Raphael got this commission in 1516 from Cardinal Giulio de' Medici, who was later Pope Clement VII. He worked on it on and off for the remainder of his life and in fact the painting was not entirely finished when he died rather suddenly at the age of 37. In Rome and particularly the work in the Vatican you can say that every single artist which had any caliber or quality has done work there because what they understood that by art they could actually intimidate and give the real weight not only of the religiosity but also of the culture. Artistically and politically, Rome was quite an exciting place. The great upheavals politically ended up with the sack of Rome in 1527. It, it's such a, a trying uh, century for an artist because uh, as a parallel he's got both uh, Leonardo and Michelangelo, which are very obviously uh, difficult in a way to surpass. They were working in many cases very closely alongside each other, particularly in the Vatican. Raphael was the youngest of the three and in some ways the brilliant upstart. Uh, Michelangelo obviously felt rather threatened by Raphael's genius. But what Raphael does, and it's very interesting, he does pick up what he needs from this artist and then he produces his own language. The drawing was bought by William Cavendish, the second Duke of Devonshire. We believe he actually bought the drawing in 1720 at a sale of property that had come from the collection of the late Earl of Arundel, who was one of 17th century England's greatest patrons and collectors. In the auction context, this is really the most intensely moving, powerful and wonderful drawing that we've ever had because you see a timeless, unbelievable monument of artistic creativity. We are looking at a final evolution in Raphael's work. This has the human immediacy and it has the intensity of a great Warhol or of a great Baker. The fact that it is over 500 years old is completely irrelevant. This is the greatest drawing by one of the greatest artists in the world 